Hello everyone, I'm Lee Arkinoff from Intel 471 and welcome to another episode of Happy Hein. Today we're taking a deep dive into the Async Fact, a remote access tool often used in malicious campaigns. We'll break it down by its associated tactics, techniques, and behaviors, and explore how this malware has been used in the wild. Let's jump in. Of course, coming to our resource that we always use, the Miter Tech Matrix, they describe AsyncRat as an open source remote access tool originally available through a GitHub repository that has been used in malicious campaigns. AsyncRat also provides functionality such as keyloggers, remote desktop control, our RDP control, or RDP access, uh, and many other functions that may cause harm to the victim's computer. In addition, AsyncRat can be delivered via various methods such as spear phishing, malware tizing, exploit kit, and other techniques. This malware has been discussed and dissected by lots of researchers, some independent and some working for larger cybersecurity companies, but what really has it done? Recently, the Checkpoint research team witnessed the exploitation of a PDF or portable document format reader, which is a legitimate program named Foxit PDF Reader. While you may not be as familiar with it as you are Adobe, Foxit has maybe not a big footprint, but it certainly has a significant one. A lot of customers are in the government sector, to include the U.S. Air Force, Army, Navy, and Missile Defense Agency, and some big names in technology sector that you may have heard of, names like Google, Microsoft, Intel, and Dell. While this episode isn't about this article or the Foxit exploit, the researchers did see different payloads being delivered, and yes, you probably guessed it, one of those was the async rat. Now, if we jump over to another useful tool, which is the interactive malware analysis tool that is provided by AnyRun, we can easily fetch some samples of async rat simply by searching by the malware. I'm pointing to the screen like you can see it, but the async rat. One common behavior seen is the, the process execution of a bat file that can be an indicator of an unpacking sequence that leads to the deployment of an additional executable. When I look at bat files that are tagged as async rat, this is a normally the first thing we see happen. So if we would select this setup.bat, which I have open already, we can see that going through the process, the first process that is run is command.exe slash c, and it references the app data local temp directory and the setup setup.bat. Now, if we come to the text report, once again, we see this as the process information. Well, of course, in this case, the parent process is explored because we are detonating this malware on our own um, or whoever submitted this did. But at the same time, this parent process may change, but this behavior of command.exe slash C and the app local temp directory, this is a behavior often associated with async rep. Now, if you've seen other things, please feel free to leave that in the comments or hit me up. You know, say, hey, you know, I was in, looking at an async rat investigation and this is what I found. But this is something we see that's very common with the async rat. But if we know this is a common behavior, how can we capture this in a way to hunt for the async rat in a way that doesn't zero in on just a single technique or a single directory? But how do we apply this knowledge to a more general query? Let's take a look at the Hunter platform. We've done just that. So if you do have community access, you jump in here, type in async rat, look for some hunt packages that exist um, that are available to the community members. Scroll down, we see the auto run or ASAP registry key modification, which I'm pretty sure we covered in another happy hunting episode. And we come down here and we can see the execution bad script to unpack payload all in this async rat uh, malware collection. So we're gonna select that, open up in a new tab, Take a look at what this is. Now, once again, I said we applied this knowledge in a way that most uh, customers or community members can apply it and hunt for in their environment. So if I scroll down, I want to look at the query logic table. This is getting my, the main idea of what the values and the fields we're looking in. Basically, a field value relationship. Just to give you a little background. But we're looking for command.exe and the slash C and a bat. So all these values existing in the, the process command line. So if we jump back to the report again, we're looking for this section and this section. Now, what else we're looking for? Any suspicious locations? We're referencing the app data, downloads, or the temp. 
And what can we find here? And once again, looking here, we see app data, we see temp. Now I know this is app data local temp, but there are also other directories that have been abused by the async rat, and that's why we'd like to include that. But we're also looking at the download. So we're looking at these multiple directories that we've seen in reports and articles from you know, the major companies or independent researchers that say, hey, this is where the async rat likes to hide. So we're gonna scroll up, we're gonna grab our Splunk version, and we're gonna jump into our tool and we're gonna see what that looks like. So here we are in Splunk with our query all built out for us. Basically, all we did was come down here, Splunk, come down to Syspond, select copy paste, drop it in the tool, and here we are. So now we have some results. We see that the username is James Murphy, the process or the child process is command.exe. The parent process is command.exe as well. Like I said, that parent process could change depending on how this batch file was executed. And then when we take a look at the process command line, we see users, James Murphy, the downloads directory, which was referenced in the hunt package, all executing upgrade system.bat. Now that matches the logic that we see. We see command.exe slash C, the bat file, and then updated downloads temp directory. Now, where do you go from here? Well, from here, you can pivot off the process IDs or the parent process ID, see what else happened with command.exe. Did it execute anything else in this short time frame? You can also take a look at the upgrade system.bat to see what that did. So look at all its child processes, or you could just take a deeper dive into James Murphy's activity, which might turn out some, uh, you know, interesting things. Now that we've dissected the behavior of async rat and its place in the broader threat landscape, it's time to put this knowledge into action. Armed with these insights, you can start identifying similar patterns in your own threat hunts. Now, don't forget to sign up for your free Hunter community account to enhance your skills further. With your free account, you'll gain access to your execution bat script to unpack payload, which was the hunt package we used in this episode, and it allows you to track this malware within your environment. Stay vigilant, stay curious, and as always, happy hunting.